and he's taking it back all the way. Prescott Burgess goes to the house for a Michigan touchdown. Penny to throw. He's going for Manningham. Left corner of the end zone. He's got it. Three touchdowns for Super Mario. Coming up on Michigan Replay, the showdown in South Bend goes to Michigan. We'll have the victorious highlights. We'll also meet a big guy in the Michigan defensive front. And we'll look ahead to the Big Ten opener as we scout the Badgers of Wisconsin. All that and more coming up next. Michigan Replay with Lloyd Carr is brought to you in part by Diet Mountain Dew. How do does diet? By Pontiac, official performance machines of Michigan and the NCAA. By Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade, is it in you? By LaSalle Bank, proud to support the University of Michigan football program. LaSalle Bank, making more possible. And by Big Boy Restaurants. Oh boy, Big Boy, celebrating 70 years as your hometown family restaurant. Hello everybody and welcome to Michigan Replay. How about those Wolverines going into South Bend with a convincing 47 to 21 win? You're feeling pretty good. Well, it was a fun day, Jim. <laughs> I would say it was fun. You know, uh, if you're playing or coaching enough of those games, you're going to win some and lose one. But uh, winning in South Bend is something we haven't done in a while, so it was a special, special victory. You know, and everybody keeps saying, you know, <coughs> prior to this game, the media, the country, it's a statement game. It's separation Saturday. Do you as a coach get into that old hype? No, I get into the, the rivalry. I mean, the rivalry, and I, I think that's what both teams almost always do uh, because they know what that game means to each institution and uh, to each program. Well, it got started in a big way. Your defense came out early and I think made a statement of their own that they were going to be around all 60 minutes. Well, Notre Dame won the toss and elected to take the ball. And uh, in this first series here, they throw the ball a little bit behind the crossing tight end. And Prescott Burgess uh, alertly uh, picks the ball off and he Dropped the ball. He acted like he had been in the end zone before. Jim. And you like that, didn't you? I do. He, but I'm happy for Prescott. A great play. Yeah. And it's seven nothing at this point. But then you make a big mistake. Well, I think more than anything else, Notre Dame had a great call. They gave us a defense that uh, we we were not anticipating uh, off a look that we had worked against. And the Duke way uh, steps in front, makes a great play. But it's not the kind of uh, a play that um, that you want to start off with offensively either. No, and, and they go into score, make it seven to seven. But the thing I liked is that Chad Henney came back from that, and the rest of the first half he was unbelievable. Well, Jim, here's a blitz uh, where Mario Manningham is single covered. We get great protection, which was one of the goals that we had, and Chad makes a great throw and a big play 69 yards. You missed the extra point, it's 13-7, but on the next kickoff, you create your own chance with a turnover. Well, Jim, we had trouble on previous uh, games with a kickoff return, and here, Obi Alibo, our uh, fullback, uh, strips of football, and Morgan Trent comes up with it. We kicked the ball off nine times today, and uh, our coverage was uh, much, much better than it has been. Then on the drive, you get Alibo the ball. Well, Obi is uh, a very good receiver, and I think as the season goes on, uh, he'll, he's going to make some more catches. And, and the running game was key in this football game, wasn't it? Well, there over the right side, we get uh, the cutoff on the backside, and, and uh, Mike makes a good cut back. And here we run behind uh, Adam or Alex Mitchell and Ruben Riley, Mark Beal on the right side, and uh, uh, get uh, some more points on the board. And 20 to 7 is the score into the first quarter. Defense still at it. Short yardage, you stop Walker. Well, Will Johnson and, uh, and um, Lamar make great penetration and we get cleaned up. You're right, a big stop at that point in the game. And here's Chad making a great throw to Arrington. Again, Chad now, has, remember that first throw he threw was an interception. He's coming out confident and ripping the ball in there. Jim, he's played extremely well. 
uh, last week and then in practice and here makes another perfect throw uh, again on single coverage against Mario. So Mario Manningham had a big day and part of that uh, credit goes to the protection because Chad had good protection all day long. Hits Breston here for a big play. Then you go to the running game. Well, the draw play was uh, very effective for us there on second and long. Uh, good blocking, and Mike Hart, uh, he can find the hole. Another draw, and Kevin Grady does a great job. Power running. Well, he's Grady is a, is, uh, gets better every week. He's uh, uh, securing the football. He's improving as a pass protector. And here's the touchdown to Manningham, his third. It's 34-7, Coach. Well, what are you thinking? I'm thinking... How did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's now not you're... something you anticipate, that's for sure. Well, and now with just two minutes left, you're probably wondering, now why is this happening? Well, you know, you, you're always uh, in this situation. Uh, we get uh, pretty good pressure there, but we lose contain, and he hits. Uh, we had the clock in our favor there, but the play right there really hurt us. And then uh, from down in close off of play action, they hit some margin. 34-14 is the score at half. Now, what do you say? Did the last drive give you some coaching points to get your kids at halftime to say, hey, this is not over? Well, absolutely. But, I mean, I, we tried to talk about the positive things that we're doing. We're running the football effectively. We're playing great defense against the run. We knocked uh, Brady Quinn down several times in the first half. So we had control of the football game. We were receiving the kickoff. What we wanted to do was go out and have a uh, uh, great play in the third quarter. When we come back, we will look at some of that great play. But first, we hear from Prescott Burgess, who says interceptions take more than just one guy. Just doing the defense, you know, in the right place at the right time, I got to give it up for the defensive line, you know, because without them tip balls, you know what I'm saying, who knows, who knows what would happen. But uh, I give it all to everybody, man. We came out here and played. People can't, you know, people doubted us, you know. We just had to come out here, prove people wrong. I think we got the job done. When you got Mike in the backfield, you you gotta gotta put a lot of people in a box, you know what I'm saying? Mike a great back. I mean, me, Adrian, and Steve, whoever get the ball, something can happen. I mean, that's with either one of them. Me, Adrian, or Steve. It's beautiful. Something can happen. Well, I guess, Mario, something happened three times in the first half, caught touchdown passes. Well go ahead. Well let me interrupt. You're part you of this one show. Second. I do let wanna, you I do want to make this point. Here's Prescott Burgess. And Mario Manningham from the same high school, Warren Harding High School in Warren, Ohio. Making they, huge plays on a national stage. Isn't I that mean, something? They, uh, they made Warren uh, even more famous today. Yes, they did. They made Warren proud. Go to the uh, third quarter highlights. You got the ball. Didn't do anything scoring-wise in the first possession, but you possessed the ball a bit. Then you get the big play on their second possession. Well, Allen Branch, with great pressure, uh, gets through, hits the quarterback, and the ball gets up uh, high in the air. Prescott comes up with his second interception, and we get the ball first and goal inside the five. But you can't shove it in. Uh, we had, uh, we didn't run very well on first down. On second down, we missed uh, a, a pass in the corner of the end zone and then have to settle for uh, a field goal. But Reeves. Garrett Rivas had an excellent day. He sure did. And that gives you a 37-14 lead. Here's another tremendous hit on the quarterback by Sean Crable. We worked uh, a lot of games, but Crable uh, gets better every week. And with that kind of pressure, it's hard to throw the ball accurately. And, and you saw it during the game. Quinn just couldn't get it done. Here, Chad hits Manningham. Played a little bit in the second half because he thought he had a bad injury. Well, he's, uh, he's fine, and, and, and he showed a lot of toughness. Here's uh, a heck of a throw and catch by uh, uh, Chad and Adrian Arrington, again, uh, having an impact on the game. Couldn't stick it in the end zone, but again, the special teams gets the kick in there. Now it's 40-14 to 14 with one quarter to go, and you really got Notre Dame 
between a rock and a hard Well, we're feeling great right now, Jim, because we had the wind in the fourth quarter, so from the kicking game standpoint, and uh, now they're uh, we're using the clock. They're throwing a lot of short passes. And they're going no huddle, too, because you've you really forced them out of their run game, haven't you? Well, you know, there's uh, Morgan Trent, who I think had by uh, his best game at uh, Michigan uh, in this game. Uh, he was in great position all the time. Here, uh, McKnight uh, steals one from him. But uh, I thought our secondary did a, a wonderful job of uh, defending the big plays. Notre Dame was a big play team coming in this game, and I thought for the most part we did a tremendous job. Well, pass defense is about pressure and coverage, and I thought you got it both <coughs> on Saturday. Well, there's Sean Crable uh, making another play, and uh, here we're uh, pressing the pocket. Here a big uh, fourth down play. Uh, the tight end uh, on a great throw from Quinn. They keep the drive alive. And how about this interception by Leon Hall? This is this is a super effort on Leon Hall's part. Great hands and a guy, if he gets near the football, he's got a chance to catch it. And, and that pretty much uh, puts it away. Even though Notre Dame gets the ball back with five minutes to go, they start uh, a drive here. They complete one to Samarja. Uh, you know, they're they're getting there, but then the defense finishes it off with Lamar Woodley. Well, you know, we're in cover two there. And Ryan Monday, who also played well, I don't know how the ball got out of his hand, but some way Lamar ends up with it. And what a will he displayed here to get to the end zone. I now, mean, he wanted a touchdown. Now, yeah. take, now, now, now take a look at this. It's your first regular season bath. Oh, yeah, that hurts. <laughs> now, is that cold? i got to find out who did that. Is no, that. It's pretty cold. That's pretty cold. But you know what? I'll take it. I'll you'll take you'll it. take it. Yeah. I, I was going to say about Woodley's run there. That's late in the fourth quarter, and he's been rushing the passer all day. He's in shape. Jim, uh, he had a remarkable ball game and a great effort all the game. But, you know, the thing that is if people watched on TV, they probably noticed this. But down on that field, there were four uh, commercials in each quarter, five minutes each. Oh, the, that's the game 80 went, minutes. Yeah, that's 80 minutes that the game is extended. The players are on the field. I mean, that was a long afternoon. They talk about the rules committee short in the game. Now we got uh, TV extending. Hey, if you expect somebody to shorten TV commercials, you're barking up a but long. But five time. minutes. It's all about the money, coach. Well, change the game a little bit, I'll tell you that. <laughs> the other thing we talked about a little bit is you were pleased with the defense because all the passes, even the complete ones, they were contested. There was tight coverage. But that's where you know your defense is really playing, isn't it? Well, I thought our kids really executed the game plan. I thought our defensive coaches had a wonderful game plan. And we are uh, a quick team. We've got... Uh, a very, very good uh, front four with, with the ability to substitute. Do you ever think about the stuff that's said before the game and getting the monkey off your back and all this stuff that goes on in the media? Or do you just say, great win, enjoy it for 24 hours and move on to next week? Well, I, you know, there's always uh, a desire sometimes to strike back. Uh, and in my case, you know, it, it's relative to, for example, Chad Henney and what he went through, the criticism he went through a year ago. Uh, and to be able to go into that game, and as you mentioned earlier, throw an interception on the first down that goes back to the four-yard line and come back and play flawlessly. This kid had a great ball game. Yeah, that's always great to see. When we come back, we'll take a look at one of the Michigan defensive linemen. First, we hear from Lamar Woodley, who says the defense was fired up and ready at South Bend. Coach English made excellent, you know, excellent calls, you know, and we prepared for the game pretty good this week. And everybody came out here and, and played how they know they can play. And when we do that every week as a team, this can continue to happen every week. One of the great stories in college football is that of a young man who works hard through four years with playing time, but because of injuries and other factors beyond his control, he doesn't reach his full potential. Then in his last year, all the work pays off. Well, that's Rondell Biggs, the Wolverine starting defensive end opposite Lamar Woodley. 
Rondell says the perseverance and hard work has all been worth it. He and Woodley have been dominant bookends for the defense in the early going. This is a blessing, man. I went out there. I worked hard all year. I worked hard to get back from my injury, and I just, I just took it as a blessing. I had an opportunity. I took advantage. You know, I played to the best that I could that game. You know, and being on the side, other side with Lamar, it's a, it's a great opportunity. It's kind of, we kind of battle. We compete all the time, but then again, it's kind of, it's a good thing because we got two ends. You know, we can get the job done. Rondell also believes this year is an opportunity to make things right from a year ago. The Michigan defense took some hits a year ago, and Biggs believes he and his teammates have something to prove this year. We know we're better than that. You know, some teams out there, I hate to say what we could have beat. I hate using that term, but if we could have played to where we were supposed to or finished game the way we were supposed to, we could have won. I don't like saying that, but, you know, that's the reality. We got to look back on things. And, yeah, it's a chip on our shoulder, so we, gotta, we just got to go out here and play like we're supposed to. Biggs is also playing for a big fan of his at home in Southfield, his mother. When Rondell came to Michigan, his mom knew nothing about football, but now she may know even more than Rondell does. She thinks she does. Like, she'd call me up and tell me, I guess she'd look online or she know the, the latest news on a player. Oh, did you know so-and-so got hurt in the NFL? So-and-so went to this team? Or, I'm like, Ma, I, yeah, I know that. She be telling me stuff like, I don't know, man. My mom's real funny, though. She, she's a good, good lady. I talk to my mom every day. She, she'll be the first to call, first to congratulate me, first to wish me good luck, all that stuff. She, she's a great fan, you know. Like, I, I was telling her at the press conference, like, and when I first started, she didn't know nothing about football. Now I can go over to her house, and she's watching football on her own. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Mom's watching football. She but comes to practice. Today. Does she really? Yes, yeah, she does. Does she give you any hints on how yeah. to play D? Yeah. Yeah? She gets some blitz packages Yeah, going? She, she wants Rondell to do certain things out there. Well, he's doing some pretty good yes, things out there. Yes, That's is. Rondell Biggs. When we come back, we'll look ahead to the Big Ten opener against Wisconsin. But first, we hear from Mark Beal talking about balance on offense is always a key. Well, that was our game plan every game, just come in and run the ball, and uh, when you have to in situations, you know, we're going to take shots down the field, and uh, those shots worked. You know, a couple times to Mario there, a couple times to Adrian, and, uh, you know, when you can run the ball, and they have to put, you know, seven, eight, nine people in the box, and, uh, you know, to, to come up and uh, defend us, that's what happens. You know, it opens up the passing game a lot, and, uh, you know, that's, that's our game plan, and it worked. You know, coaches did a great job. You know, Chad did a great job throwing the ball. Mike did an incredible job running the ball, you know, breaking that first tackle with those nine guys in the box and did a great job. Uh, keep our heads high and uh, keep them on our shoulders, really, and just move into a Big Ten season with our heads held high and uh, come out with another victory. Right, Chad Henney's right. Okay, Notre Dame's over. You're no longer my hero. You got to move on. You got to move on. You got to play the Big Ten over. Right. And they don't give you a break. You open with Wisconsin. Well, the Wisconsin is an outstanding football team. They're undefeated. Uh, very physical team. And coming off a great season a year ago. And, and a new coach in Brett Bielma, but a guy that's been in the program. So it's not like he's really a new coach, is well, it? Well, he's been in the, he, he played uh, at Iowa and uh, has been at Kansas State with uh, Bill Snyder. So he's paid his dues. He's still a young guy, but... Uh, he got a great opportunity and, and, he, and a lot of returning veterans on the, uh, what I thought a year ago was an outstanding defense. Well, Stocko's their quarterback, and he's been around a while. This is their newest running back, P.J. Hill. 26 carries against San Diego State for 184 yards. Well, they lost the running back, uh, and, and, but some way, somehow, they're always going to have an outstanding back. And, and they're going to pound you, aren't they? Yes, they are. And defensively? You said defensively they've got players. Matt Shaughnessy's as good a defensive end that's out there, huh? I thought a year ago he was, a, he was uh, on his way to being a great player, and I think he'll get there. Uh, middle linebacker Mark Zalewski, also a, a solid player. Roderick Rogers at free safety. Th these guys will get after you on defense. Well, we struggled a year ago moving the football, and uh, Jim, the guy that I, I think we have to mention uh, is Joe Thomas, their All-American uh, offensive tackle. Some people think he's going to be a top five or six Well, pick. that's the offensive line. That's kind of standard operating procedure yeah. at uh, Wisconsin, yeah. isn't it? A Big offensive line. A great can... football player. Yeah. Your, pro your deal coming into this week's game has to be the great victory and the high you're on, but 
you know, come back down to earth. Now it's time to, you know, start to, you know, get back in there, put your shoulder up against the rock and start pushing again. Well, you know, any time you come off uh, a win like this, in my experience, uh, you know, there's a tremendous uh, morale boost. I mean, it, it's, it's a great thing to be around. But the issue is, can you maintain focus on the immediate how do you future? Guard, how do you guard against letdowns? Well, if you, if you look back, uh, for example, a year ago, we went to Madison and lost to Wisconsin. So to me, that's uh, plenty of motivation. <laughs> All right. Everybody out there that's coming to the Michigan game, make sure it's May's Rage Day. So when you get to the stadium, put on your May's T-shirts, whatever it is, Wisconsin and Michigan State, both of those games designated as May's Rage games. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you